it's vintage. Well, I started thrifting when I was really young. Uh, I had a babysitter who that was you know all she could afford. So sometimes during the day she would go to thrift stores and take me with her, and I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. You know, just finding you know pieces that no one else had, and you know really unique you know little dresses. And as I got older, you know, I still did that. Before it was you know in style. And, you know, sometimes you know people would say like, oh, you know, what's that? Like I shop at Bloomingdale's. That's really weird. But, um, you know, I, I really liked having unique stuff. And then when I was in college, you know, you know how it is being a college student, I'm usually broke. And, um, you know, you want to look cool, but you don't want to spend a lot of money. And, you know, I, I just love the idea of, you know, finding vintage pieces that inspire things that are on the runway because it was really into fashion. So, you know, I would look at sites like, you know, style.com or other blogs and, I would take you know, a mental image of those pictures and I would go out to thrift stores and look for vintage pieces that were similar and put them together in similar styles. So that's really how I got into it a lot more. When I, when I realized that vintage is well made, it's better made than most of the things that we get in stores, you know, the mall or a lot of these you know, retail stores. And it's what inspires some of these designer pieces that are, you know, two thousand, thousands of dollars. Um, that's really what I guess, grew my love for, for vintage. Um, and then the name La Petite Marmoset came about in high school. I knew I wanted to start a boutique um, for, since I was in high school. I've always really kind of, kind of been into fashion. And, you know, so many boutiques call themselves these French names to sound fancy. And I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to be silly with it. I'm going to be like a little like, cheeky with it and call it something, you know, just call it something else. So my favorite animal in high school was the pygmy marmoset. It's this tiny monkey. Actually, hold on one second, I can grab it. I can show you. It's a stuffed animal. So it's this tiny monkey that is like when it's a baby, it wraps around your finger and it gets no larger than this guy right here. And I said, I'm going to call my store La Petite Marmoset because I can and I want to. And my logo is going to be a monkey with a bow in its head. And that's, that's all I knew. I didn't know what I was going to sell or how I was going to do it, but I knew that I wanted a store and I wanted to call it that. And um, then, you know, in college, you know, I, I, my parents were not too excited about you know, my dreams of owning a boutique and, you know, designing, and they said it was superficial. So I went to college and studied journalism because I figured, okay, well, that would be another way to get into fashion and having a real adult job. Never, never listen to those people, by the way. Do what you want. Um, and I, uh, I also worked in sales when I was in college. I worked selling uh, knives, uh, direct selling sales of knives. So it's not like the sexiest job or anything, but it taught me a lot. And my senior year of college, I started my blog, La Petite Marmoset, with the intention of later starting a store. So I started my blog as a way to build the brand of La Petite Marmoset. And then a couple months later, I started a store. So this was last year, my senior year of college. And you know, after that, and after I graduated, I focused on this you know, full force. And I focused on selling vintage and also redesigned vintage pieces. So I'll take vintage, and you know, sometimes people will see like a dress or let me just oh, okay. For example, like this dress right here. So this is, you know, a cute dress, but some girls might be like, hmm, you know, it doesn't fit quite right, or it's too long. So we'll take it and we'll make it shorter, or we might make it into, you know, a high-low hem, we'll take the sleeves off. We'll, we'll make simple changes to vintage pieces that make them super wearable and modern. So we'll sell vintage and redesign vintage, and that's kind of what we do now. And we're in the process of researching manufacturing process and we then want to make pieces that are inspired by vintage pieces still very good quality not like the you know the really cheap stuff you get at Forever 21 or an Urban Outfitters but good quality that's inspired by vintage and that's kind of what we do.